lock cowboy? Yes. Like a lock <laughs> of the cowboy. Company. Okay, hang on. We've got to take the brakes on that real quick. Uh, if we were downtown chilling out and like we walked by a place that said locked cowboy, are we going in? And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben Stone here at LGC Axel Switch in the Bits in our little Linux powered studio. Joined every week by Jordan Zwang and Pedro Mateus and you at home, Shot Room Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. That's right. What's new with everyone? I got a new toy. Yeah. Did you know? Is it shiny? <laughs> it not when I got it. Is it I, right in front of your face? Nope. It is now. <laughs> I can't see it. His vision is based on movement. <laughs> Fair. You're not going to do that to me a second time. I'll get you. I got motion detectors now. Um, yeah, I, I got a really good deal on um, this uh, microphone because uh, when I got it, it looked like this. Sexy. <laughs> but mank. Uh, I put gloves on it when I took it out of the box. Yes. <laughs> it was covered in what can only be described as a layer of shame. And, um, well... Moral of the story, six hours, I disassembled it, took all the foam padding, redid that, refloated all the solder joints, and packed it together. Then I rubbed it off for what I imagine was about six hours with a metal polish, and then do and clean it. Then I clean another spot, and I'm like, oh, we can go deeper. <laughs> and I finally so several got, hours later. Yeah, I, I, I ballparked. It took about six hours, but this is what we ended up with. And uh, yeah. So I got a very reasonably priced um, Electro Voice RE27ND. It's a fun microphone to have. Uh, a lot of people don't like them because they are EQ'd. Um, well, they're a lot brighter than your standard mic, which I like because I do everything possible to take the bass out of my voice so you can hear me and I don't sound like I'm underwater. So, you know, dude. Hi, hello, Alvin, uh, Alan Malventano. How you doing, um, Mister Low Pass <laughs> Filter Stone? Dude, uh, yeah, I, I like the sound of it. It's great, and these things will outlive you. And you know, hey, I wasn't ever going to buy a new one. So, yeah, neat. I'm happy with it. I'm pleased with it. What about you, Jordan? You got? Do you get well, any new boxes in the room? No, I don't. These are all old, old boxes. No, it's, uh, it's my last week of work. Uh, so that's exciting. Gonna take some time off. Gonna do, hopefully do a little more, bit more streaming stuff. Apparently Ven has some homework for me regarding a WebRTC server. That's just never, that's, that's just going to be like my Sisyphean task. I'm pushing that up the hill <laughs> and it just roll, rolls, rolls down and crushes me. I got, a, I got a bit of other work I'm doing for uh, another startup I'm consulting with. Uh, and yeah, so that's, that's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to the time off and to, Stretch my stretch my muscles. So yes, that have uh, atrophied a little bit. Wow, <laughs> wow! <laughs> Sex Panther. Sixty percent of the time it works. One hundred percent of the time. Speaking of working, sixty percent, one hundred percent of the time. Pedro, Pedro has been thinking about picking up a new profession. You know, a little side game. <laughs> mm-hmm. he's, he's Admittedly, been, I've been watching uh, new YouTube channels, and uh, the lockpicking lawyer was exactly one of them. Exactly what I would tell the authorities as well. <laughs> so I I did get a new box uh, from um, Lock Cowboy, and yeah, it is Lock a uh, yes, like a Lock <laughs> Cowboy. Company. Okay, hang on, dun, we got to take breaks in that real quick. Uh, if we were downtown chilling out, and like we walked by a place that said Locked Cowboy, are we going in? <laughs> Lock, locked cowboy or lock, lock cowboy? No, locked. It's just D, lock cowboy. cowboy. Uh, uh, like, like like a Scottish lock. It's it's just the it's a body of water filled with cowboys. Nope, th- this is and the, mo- this there. Is the v- most generic naming. That's all it says. But there's a door. It's, it's just impact font. Lock cowboy. Yeah. I I check uh, it out. Th- that's right. probably going to be a sex thing. But no, this no, one like is you- just a uh, lock picking kit with a uh, transparent padlock so you can see the pins and everything else. And I've already uh, of the three sample locks that they give you with the set of lock picks. I already picked two of them. Uh the last one is uh this one with the uh two keys on two sides. So yeah, this one's been a bit of a bitch. 
So yeah, I uh, still have, need to figure that one out. <laughs> Do you ever worry about Oblivion NPCs coming out of your closet and attacking you because you messed up picking up a lock? Picking a lock. <laughs> Stop right there, criminals come. <laughs> oh man, well, I mean, what was the thing called that you put on your um, wheel on your car? Oh, the club. We need a club for the horse. Yeah. yeah, a lock club, not that type of club for the horse. The uh, a, a horse club. I yeah. mean. You know, you can go to horse clubs, but they are very, very different experiences than the Steam Optics. 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 A lot, a lot, a lot more, more nipples, n- but not not these types of nipples. Not any nipples, man. Justice nipples. I know. Uh, we talked about this a while back, but Valve fails to nullify the $4 million Steam Controller patent case. And it's kind of interesting to read into this a little bit. Because uh, this was just an issue with a, a another company. They're like, hey, we got a patent on this and you violated it. And it turns out Valve started work on the Steam Controller and they didn't know about it. Uh, but they'd done a lot of work research and they were in production with the Steam Controller. When somebody at Valve's like, yo, probably a lawyer, like, hey, uh, this exists. We should probably do something about it. And Valve's like, fuck this. YOLO. And uh, yeah, $4 million later, maybe Valve broke even on this question mark. Yeah, I mean, and it, it was Probably. it was all for the back buttons, um, which I, I I don't know what the, you, you figure maybe they're trying to rush it to market and like maybe risk a prior art judgment. Be mm-hmm. like, oh, was, I mean, there was a patent, but we were here for a certain valid. I, I don't know. The point is uh, Val, Valve's out the out the door four million dollars. I don't know. I don't necessarily know if they broke even, but like, I don't I don't know. I guess it's, it's a shame that that steam controller never really went anywhere. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's um, what kind of got me wondering is uh, so assuming the Steam Pal is going to be that Switch thing that Ars Technica said it would, is it going to have like a third shoulder slash trigger button? No, in, in, no, it's, 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 it's going to be like the two. It has three. It's going to be the N64 <laughs> controller, right? It's going to have three. And you, you yeah. hold it by the middle, or you can hold it by either end, and it changes how the game controls. And you can hold your, your oh, your they're nin- in the front, but in the middle. Okay, right. Yeah, I and, then, yeah. and then yeah, I, the I one, didn't like yeah. what the uh, what the judge said, which was uh, just because Valve doesn't like the outcome of the uh, of the case doesn't exactly give them a reason to nullify uh, the decision. So tell Oracle yeah. that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like that that's that's the entire point of appeals. I don't know. I, I mean I can definitely see Valve like tr- maybe maybe trying mixing it up and like doing something like Nintendo and like mixing the controllers like you know, just system up, you know, maybe something a little more advanced. Like I don't know. It, it, it looks like it, it looks like it could use a weight in front of it hanging and maybe a little bit more clinical depression. This this is uh, <laughs> quite terrifying. Tune into the pre pre super shows if you want to see me of this so <laughs> good news everyone uh amd they've done a thing for the first 30%. time yeah. yes. on windows uh, th- yes uh they finally got to uh the 30 percent uh market on steam on linux uh the <laughs> well it's actually in general too if you look at the breakdown between uh december 2019 and may 2021 AMD now has 30% of the processor share in the um, Steam survey, as far as we can take those numbers at face value, because people have rightfully called those into question in the past, and considering that Valve is not willing hey, to Joe. share the actual numbers, how hey. dare it you? Must, it, it must be accurate. I got my Steam survey this week on my TV box. <laughs> so It's been which, over six months for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but but I I mean like okay and if you, if, R- 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 what are the chances that those surveys just go to Devnell? Oh, uh, there there's a non. I guess they go to here chance. first. <laughs> I I don't think. Well, he, yeah. no, honestly, I do not believe that these are reflective of the maybe it factors oh. in like three percent. Uh, again, these, these are all for like public public numbers, right? Like Valve has the actual stats right. because whenever you start up Steam, it fucking phones home to their servers, right? Um, yes. But yeah, we're 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 we're, see, we're seeing the the AMD processor uptick overall, but like it's been at thirty uh, percent on Linux and above thirty percent on Linux for a while, um, mainly because I think 
I think a a lot of uh, Linux gamers are a lot more budget conscious, and b a lot of Linux people in general just are like, ooh, <laughs> Intel, gross. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to throw the <laughs> argument down that um, there's there's nothing uh, like Linux aficionados love more than an underdog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I've we're never, using the underdog operating system. <laughs> Haiku. I'm just going to throw that out there, man, because I, I have I've never bought an Intel desktop system. I've always went AMD to my detriment sometimes. But you know, now we live in these weird times where I'm like, all right, got Threadripper, then we got the new stuff. A- Didn't AMD just like <laughs> Doctor Sushi walked out and dropped the fucking hammer? Yeah. Well, well, once, yeah. The, once they stopped trying to sell people on Magni Core and implemented some sort of hyper threading S solution, people are like, oh, yeah, now we can pay attention to AMD processors. Oh, you actually perform with the video games that use one thread of jobs for everything. So, yes. But yeah, the uh, thing that I had to look at in the Steam survey was I switched to Linux only. It's like, okay, so what's the most popular GPU? Wait, where's the most popular GPU thing gone? Oh, it's gone. Okay, so mm-hmm. that's just I not that too. there. Yeah, uh, the, 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 the video overall, card description. Yeah, the overall, the 1060 is still the winner. It's It's been lowering uh, over the past several months, but it is still the uh, number one. And if on Linux specifically, if the VRAM, uh, the video GPU video RAM, is anything to go by eight gigabytes? That means that the RX 480, 470, 580, 570, 590, all of those are probably still leading the pack because, yeah, it's, they're available. I think it was the you 480. Can, yeah, exist. the 480 was yeah. the top one for Linux uh, before yeah. the the thing disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> Even right now, where we currently at, you will just happily if you need a video card, you will take whatever the whatever you can get, man. I mean, oh man, oh, yeah. the, my the 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 computer I got the survey on had a 580 in it. That 580 is still chugging, like especially with the uh, the performance improvements from uh, the new Mesa release in uh, kernel 512. Like, yeah. it's still yep. it's still well, doing business. Of, absolutely, like this time last year, I'm like, man, I got this little no cape non super 2060. Roll around, this is like bow before me, peasants. And, yeah. <laughs> so, I have a video card, <laughs> motherfucker. Speaking of NVIDIA stuff, NVIDIA rolled out and did another, huh? Moment? Yeah. So uh, this is from Plagman, Pierre Loup Garou. Uh, and he announces that NVIDIA has been working on uh, dynana- dynamic linear super Dynana-na. sampling support for Danana, <laughs> Banana Torres, yeah. Um, Dynamic, dynamic li- linear super. <laughs> I'll get it. I will get it eventually. God damn it. Um, but yeah, um, they're they're implementing it in Proton. Uh, what does this mean if you have a uh, GPU with a tensor core in it? Then you might be able to render games at uh, lower resolutions and display them at higher resolutions. Hopefully, helps a bit with the performance stuff. Uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood apparently uses it, so maybe that would help a cup, bit with a some of the hiccups i don't know though because most of the issues we ran into Ven and i were like multiplayer related because only one of us owned a full copy of the game and that uh <laughs> but there, there there are a couple other games that are using dlss so maybe it'll help improve performance under proton it's 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 definitely a nice to have must be nice to have a tensor core capable gpu mm. get one of those it it no it's horrible i am every day is really a struggle i mean you know, for that one game that you're able to play with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I will jack you up at Quake 2 at 43 to 47 <laughs> frames per second at 30 I mean, it'll, it'll be re- you know, real easy considering, <laughs> yeah, it's real easy considering I'm playing it at like two frames a second. Yeah. yeah fair. Yeah, but by all means, NVIDIA, do keep up the uh, software support and stuff like that. We're still waiting on the driver release to actually support this. Well, but, because, uh, uh, yeah. They're saving it for Wayland. NVIDIA does weird shit like this sometimes. You know, we see, like, Proton game fixes in the damn drivers. Okay. <laughs> I mean... it's. 
it's all validation for their stack, right? Like they want their they want their shit to like run properly. So g- games are a great way to test those edge cases, especially running under like Proton or Wine, where you're making the GPU do stuff that it's not usually supposed to do because it's like, oh well, I need to do this. DirectX normally does this, but we got to do it in Vulkan, so it uses this stuff. And, yeah. Maybe there's some uh, suave motherfucker or fuck it in marketing that understands how the halo effect works. It's like keep these motherfuckers happy. They're the people that end up getting asked like GPU, CPU recommendations and people are ready to buy stuff at companies now, which is weird because we're old. Again, again, I always, I always think it's more like it's enterprise focused. Cause like, yeah, the DLSS stuff is nice, but like what it's really doing is it's putting that in the hands of like well, people. I, who are, I see the enterprise yeah. stuff is like, of course we want these um, Tesla V 1000s mm-hmm. because um, a couple of years, <laughs> I'm going to take a couple of those bad boys home. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. We're all exactly. working from home now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah let's, let's get the hand truck <laughs> pushing. Yeah, you, you just have an entire rack of servers. Just like I need this yes. for working from home. Like you're in accounting. Shut up. <laughs> Listen, I have some very intense spreadsheets I need to work with. We do have some new games this week to talk about. We do, surprisingly, uh, which lately we haven't had all those many. But the first one is Sunblaze, and I need to give uh, big, big kudos to Bonus Stage, the publisher, uh, for sending us some keys. Uh, Big, big thank you for that. And yeah, it is... um it's a platformer, and if you're looking at it and going, that looks awfully familiar, you've probably played Celeste. Because, yeah... That, that, that. <laughs> they uh, in the press thing they are very clear it's like similar games Celeste and Super Meat Boy oh. it's, a, it's a brand new okay, genre then. you know how there's like Metroidvanias <laughs> I, I propose we call this new one Meat Test or maybe <laughs> sell, no 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 let's not let's not do the second one I think Meat Test is, is the way to go <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I mean, I'm down with it. Yeah, my first thought when uh, I saw this pop up on uh, Steam, I was like, yeah, Totes not select. Hey, look, it's using FNA. Uh, we were having a discussion about <laughs> yes. that. Last night, yes, yeah, it JLMC <laughs> 2.5 OS. So, all right, right on. And it'll, it is, it'll run. It is very small at 500 yep. megabytes. And I did get a chance. I've only got like three or four minutes into it. I got to give you guys and gals credit. Uh, that intro right there with the dad got a laugh out of me. It got me in the right mood to fuck around with your game. So good job on that. Makes and me want to cry. Uh, right now it's 50% off uh, for the release thing. So up until the 10th of June, which I'm not entirely sure what day it is right now, <laughs> the 6th. So yes, uh, <laughs> you still have some time. Go and pick it up if you like Celeste or if you like Super Meat Boy. By all means, go and pick it up. Um, yeah, it's... It's another platformer on Linux because it's we need more of this. So who wants to fix weighted weeb? I do. <laughs> Speak, <laughs> speaking of hipster pixel, pl- pixel platforms on Linux, uh, Astalon, Tears of the Earth. It's out. You can pick it up for about 22 bucks. And yeah, it, it's it's supposed to be another sort of Metroidvania. At, well, I guess not so much Metroidvania, less so on the discovering, but very much so like Mega Man-esque uh, Mm-hmm. Pla- hipster pixel platformer it certainly looks very very good um although it's not passing that indie test because it comes in at about 600 megabytes despite it looking <laughs> like an nes game I don't know but that. i mean that's that's part for the course these days i'm not going to hate on people for that I, I think it's pretty dope uh anything that does a decent job at or at least attempting to adhere to like the original nest mm-hmm. color palette like mm-hmm. okay that's that's challenging man because uh 20 bucks all right all right uh it, it's definitely weeby but okay yeah i was looking well at the character well. in the middle is that like a mixture between Mega Man and uh, shovel knight because the um yeah no the Mega graphics waifu. are very but yeah very shovel nighty so mm. i guess good job because people really yeah. like shovel knight for some reason Indeed. possibly no, yeah. might might be because it's like a very well done platformer. I don't know. What do we think about? Uh, did you ever play um, Metal Slug? Yeah, my my yeah. friend has a Metal Slug arcade cabinet, so I, that's the only time I've really played it. Seriously. Okay. Um, how were they in Canada in the states? I do know. Growing up, uh, there was always a Neo Geo thing at the pub or anything like that because we'd just oh, sneak yeah. around and like hit them. <laughs> and that was like one of the games that was constantly it was like Metal Slug, King of Fighters, and stuff like that. I, 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 I remember. Mo- 
I remember mostly Sega machines back when, from when I was a kid. Mm. The Sega Rally wasn't the only Sega machines that were in like the occasional bar thing. Yeah. Big, yeah. big Buck Hunter. That well, shit, I yeah. think in uh, a little bit of an homage because this this really reminded me. You know, when I see a goose with robotic arms <laughs> smashing shit up, I immediately oh. think Metal Slug. Um, Sold. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What the fuck is this thing? <laughs> I'm kind of down with it, man. Mighty Goose. It's fast paced run and gun shooter starting. Uh, Starring a bounty hunter goose, epic weapons, uh, boss fights. It it looks like Metal Slug. I mean, far as the pixel art animation stuff, which I say that as a compliment with a bit more platforming and foresty stuff. But it looks like they're fighting the Tau from Warhammer. Jesus, possibly. I mean, come on, it's War Goose. I mean, War. Listen again. I'm I'm sold. You don't you don't yes. need you don't need to tell me anymore. You you had me at Goose. <laughs> I, I guess the uh, Epic Goose game thing uh, was um, very, very popular, so might as well Peace cash w- in, right? Peace, Peace was, was never, never an option. option. Yes. <laughs> so it is out. It's uh, 1999. I really wish I would see multiplayer down here, but we don't. So this is like Forever Alone version. Sing- oh, no, split screen co-op. So, yes, it's single player. Um, mm-hmm. And you get a one <laughs> But you three. can use Steam Remote Play together. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> no, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 500 megs space yeah four gigs so yeah n- nothing crazy with this I-, I like ideas with this and you can't, can't really go so with like just ma- mass murderation with a goose right i mean that, that goose, goose has like evil bro they're ter- they're terrifying also i like the super like chunky body with like the little head on the on the goose sprite that's pretty good right <laughs> i'm done with that um retro arch got a big update Yes. New version uh, is available now. And as you may remember last week, I kind of cocked up RetroArch no, versus RetroPie. You got everything Which one right. was a dis- <laughs> right Yeah, no, I'm sure we'll get some hate mail about that at some point. Right after the show, Paige was like, did I play that well? Do you think uh, they believed I believed I was wrong? Because I still think I'm right. <laughs> no, I was genuinely wrong on that one. Be but wrong yes, with uh, version, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes. Authority. What version 194 is out now. And uh, if you are subscribed to the uh, playtest, that's the only one that's currently available on Linux. I, I Through Steam, you can just go to the website and just get the actual version. Or it's all Laka and you'll get this version too. Uh, the um, There's a big big list of updates uh they have the uh like tldr change log at the end if you just want to have a, a look at the one that jumped out at me was the ps3 slash ps4 controllers that have the little light bar I thought that's uh, the Cheetos. if you're using uh chivos uh, Ch- for achievements Shut up. <laughs> i want to believe <laughs> mm, but yeah, the uh PS Lite uh, joypad driver now works again so uh if you were relying on that for some weird reason in retro arch now it works again and uh they do have a link at the top of the article to like the lib retro course progress report that's where the interesting stuff actually is and uh the psx2 core is actually making progress unfortunately it's still not available on the raspberry pi it's only for x86 right now Hopefully someone will get that working on the Raspberry Pi. That 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 that'd be very nice. If if you if you are running RetroArch on your PlayStation 2 though, your long national nightmare is over cuz you can finally fucking play Doom 2 at an acceptable frame rate. So. <laughs> oh, was that uh did you see that thing that guy was doing he uh on the, I think it was on the Dreamcast. He turned the uh com port into the back to an SD card cache and he was running uh Doom 1 high res mode 640 at almost uh, mm. 30 frames per second. Damn. Which okay. is impressive for a system that yeah, really f- didn't know how to do 3D anything, period. At all. Yeah, for uh, the, dr- the Dreamcast? Not, yeah. the dr- not the Dreamcast, the Saturn. Uh, the Saturn, ah, right. yes. <laughs> It was dual core. It could brute force oh, 3D. Yeah. <laughs> so. uh, the, the, it's, it's like that one meme, Saturn eating its sun. That's just like a fucking <laughs> Saturn right. consuming the Dreamcast. <laughs> ah. So check this out. Uh, we reviewed um, billions of years ago a game called Shing. And yes. it, it, it was all right. I, like, okay, that's neat. It had a local multiplayer. And I think we all agreed, as we always do with every single thing, because for us, man, this would be really neat if it had online multiplayer. And they're like, you can use Steam Remote. Online multiplayer. It's not the same thing. 
Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. They they actually listened to the fans' feedback and they said, "Hey, we're we're experimenting with the new online multiplayer mode. Uh, you got you got to go into the beta. The uh, play with play with friends as the code. They're they're warning you right off the bat. This is really really busted online multiplayer. They're still fixing it. They're still soliciting feedback. But you know what? More games should be doing this because even busted testing multiplayer online is better than just sticking people with couch co-op and fucking Steam remote play. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully Hunt Down sees this and goes, hmm, maybe we should do this as well. Uh, yes, yeah. wow. <laughs> this is very exciting uh, to see. You know, I'd like to think that savvy developers have realized that remote plays is not a replacement. Thanks, Val, for playing around with it, improve on it. But like in its current state, it it's it's just a foster clock, man. Now, I think we can all agree this game. Is, uh, there's a lot of quality in this game. This was n- oh, absolutely, absolutely, oh, no, a lot yeah, of like, work in, went into in, that. Yeah, yeah, including <laughs> like the seven hour long anime show that you get at the beginning of it and you're like fuck all right but i mean it's only got 74 review well 70 yeah just 74 reviews uh, people just don't know about it now do, there is a demo um what is it currently 1990 i would say yes once we get multiplayer 100 percent on that i'd absolutely drop 20 on that no problem whatsoever but what do you think the importance is of having online multiplayer in your game, especially if you're looking at like couch co-op, you're like, hmm, that's the thing. Maybe now I'm I, I, it's good to assume a lot of people are thinking about it now, developer wise, go like, oopsie doodle, we had that a uh, whole everyone stuck at home for a year. But I, I want to put the emphasis on the important of importance of having that available at launch, because this is like shit. Nobody's playing this game. Maybe we could try that online multiplayer thing. That'll help. That would have really helped when you had that first launch and, you know, that buzz around the game. First impression kind of important. Do you think... (laughs) Do you think it's a tooling problem though? Because like I know Unity provides like a basic level of online multiplayer oh, man, service, but like use Unity, you just click the uh, multiplayer button. Does it the multi, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, the maybe the this is like button. maybe maybe this is expressing a need for like a high quality open source like network multiplayer library that you can easily drop in. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, because like having something like that to point at to like implement network multiplayer, a, lo- a lot of a lot of the developer feedback we hear is like, oh, well, it's going to take a lot of time and effort to implement this. Well, maybe having some yes, sort of- uh, Visual Studio will not uh, tab autocomplete the multiplayer net code for us. Not without giving Microsoft a shit ton of money, it won't. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> hey, I mean it. Unity does do quite a bit of lifting because we've run into the, hey, it's got multiplayer, click button. Oh, hopefully somebody shows up to play. Yes. The, yeah. The, I mean, even even that is yeah. better than nothing, right? Like, we're, we're at that point Well, right I now. mean, Pedro and I found at a way to At least that would be a start. Yes. Like, hey, Pedro, you be the other person playing this game right now in the entire world. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> it, 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 it is astounding how much matchmaking basically boils down to no one else is playing this game, so you'll find yourself eventually. Um, maybe next week, uh, maybe I'll talk Pedro into playing, or like, maybe we play Tuesday or something like that. I'm willing to give it a shot. Yeah. Okay. D- does it does it do up to? Is it only two player for I the multiplayer? We got to find out. I wanted to play around yeah. with it Friday, but we're like, uh, so we got some track mania to go play, which we're going to be playing again this Friday. Mm-hmm. But we're playing the better one that we can all connect to because some people had some really really interesting first impressions of track mania. <laughs> Sorry, Rohit and Foxy. Yes. <laughs> all right, I'm just going to sit back and relax because you guys are going to be talking about like a card game. Yeah, children's yes. trading card games. They're the best. It's time to... Di- 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 di. It's Grifflands Gold. It's out. We talked about it briefly uh, a couple weeks ago. It was in early access. It is now out of early access. Surprise. And yeah, That's it's quick. the roguelike. <laughs> yeah. The uh, full campaign's available now, they say, on their banner art. They fixed a bunch of their typos. There's some other last minute bug fixes. It looks like the game was pretty well polished uh, after its uh, tenure in early access. And uh, it just looks like... This this, an- this art style looks so good. I really just want to play this game. I hope they get back to us and give us some keys. Yes. 
And uh, oh. they already have my money for this game because, yeah, it is a deck building roguelite type of situation. That's Linux native. So, yeah, no, it's like, okay, Clay, you get my money again. They already re released a new uh, hotfix after launch. There was just a couple of things. Uh, you could get stuck in a. Uh, in a loop in a specific fight uh, and the pause menu it uh, it would not open on top of other elements in the game so you would uh, basically not be able to see it uh, there were a couple of issues that they basically sorted that out now so if you have been curious maybe now's the time to go and give it a shot but yes clay please do get back to me on my email i know i pooped no. all over um <laughs> <laughs> They, I mean, we, we've determined in the pre-pre super shows that, that they hate you personally, though. Like, yeah, probably. The, Clay's PR person has just like a picture of Pedro on their wall that they routinely stab with a knife whenever they're frustrated. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up next, Intel has a brand new GPU they're dangling in front of us. And get your Atari on, man. Yay. It's time. Asteroids. Asteroids. Pets. Asteroids. Wouldn't you know it? It's uh, about time we put the kibosh on the horse for this week. That horse and is, um, it's like a zombie, man. You can. <laughs> it's, it it's is like the blob. technically. <laughs> At the, a DNA level or a quantum level, at this point, uh, it is still technically luck, a horse. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like it's like information theory. With with the right instructions, you can reconstruct it into the horse. But now it's like a Cartman esque mask, like when he merged with Trapper Keeper. <laughs> yeah, it's a Carol That's horse. <laughs> In, indeed, if you if you if you would like to fund the massive space based laser that we're going to use to eventually defeat the horse, it doesn't it um, may it just kind of gurgles now when the bubbles yeah. pop. It just it, it just screams tets. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if if you, if you want to pay for our giant space laser, laser head on over to Patreon. Yeah, head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Cape. You'd like to help us get jiggy with it. Um, yeah, yeah. You, get, you get a bunch of uh, cool stuff for uh, becoming a Patreon. Uh, you get access to our, I mean, we, we got to say cool stuff. Otherwise, no one's going to do it. If we say marketing. It's, it, yeah, exactly. Marketing. Um, you can uh, for, at any level, you get access to our discord. You can also get it by uh, subbing to us on Twitch, which you should definitely do if you haven't done that already. Um, Higher levels get you access to video versions of the pre pre super shows and the uh, live stream, a bunch of early preview videos that Ven puts out. Uh, you get access to the show notes. You can even uh, make suggestions, edits, corrections. If you want, you can even buy your way on the damn show. No one, still, no one has taken us up on that. You that cowards. proves that we have an intelligent viewer base. You are cowards. Come on. Shut up. Come on. Do it. Kill me. <laughs> we got we got a store as well. Uh, Store.linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> Buy yourself some t-shirts or some stickers or some coffee mugs or some hoodies. I think Z somebody uh, bought something because, uh, yeah, that's a store. That, like, that, because I got a text message. It's like, your most recent purchase was from somewhere. I'm like, oh, neat. All right. Thank you, person, oh. whoever it was. <laughs> The, yeah, so uh, go cover yourself in LGC apparel. Confu confuse your friends and your enemies. We, we got the Hellogs, we got the stickers and stuff like that, and everything's priced reasonable. We're not trying to make any money off the... Because, you know, I I see other people, and they're like, 30 bucks for a fucking t-shirt? Get wrecked. You know? It's for brand awareness, <laughs> yeah. right? Well, exactly. <laughs> I mean, we want you to advertise for us, so let's like use the quality t-shirts instead of like the paper-thin ones, and they just put them at regular price, like 20 bucks for a fucking t-shirt. I think that's fair. And uh, mm, yeah. yeah, mugs are a bit expensive though. But what can you do about yeah. that? Fourteen ninety nine. <laughs> the stickers, the stickers are yeah. a very good investment. Yeah. What can you do? But may maybe you don't want to buy yourself something. Maybe you want to buy us something. If you want to do that, head on, on to our website. we got that support tab. You can mouse over it. Go to our wish lists. I have one. Ven has one. Pedro has one. Um, yeah. Get me, get me a bench or some microphones get a, or a crash pad and a or way. get me a PS five. <laughs> Why do you have another Logitech C920 on here? That was from when I thought this one was busted. 
Oh, probably. <laughs> well, I mean, of course we have uh, the genuine leather dog, <laughs> mask, bound slave, <laughs> cat, that, adult, that, sex that has been on there. Gear with mouth plug, eye leather hood, sexy helmet, unisex SM. Yes, that's that, that's been there. No, no one's taking me up on it. I got some books. If you want to buy me some books, <laughs> buy me some cute computer shit. I don't uh, know. If you get anything for the studio, we will shame you publicly on the fine up standing cannibal wall. But be warned, um, Boringsville compared to Jordan's. Uh, we got like <laughs> computer parts and office stuff and chairs and shit. Pedro, do you get anything um, that ranks up against the uh, that mask? I don't think so. No, because most of my stuff is just. Uh, oh, I do have a uh, new hood because uh, the wizard. Uh, monk hood thing is falling apart uh it's not even at the seams uh it's actually just the bits that were supposed to be how continuous long, are not continuous how anymore. long have we been doing the wizard rope <laughs> well, bit? I was about like, to here, say, here's I think, a- but the thing is, is you and i we spent some money on ours <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, no, I, I, that was fifteen pounds for the whole yeah, thing. Pedro, Pedro's got like the costume costume Halloween yeah. thing. We got like, uh, what the hell were they thinking? Oh no, this is your regular like um, chanting robe that you would normally wear. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know. So yeah, I have like, replacement wizard I, I, robes on my Amazon I, wish I, list I, because. These are falling I th- apart. I, I think the other reason those are expensive too was those were the large boys. Like you and I just can't wear regular wizard robes. Mm. We need like the the plus sized wizard robes. <laughs> We need the big and tall section. Yeah, the, for, 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 for the long, long wizards and the wide, wide wizards. Oh, man. Hey, thanks, everyone, for letting us do this. This is a very oh, weird... Yeah, we, exp- what? We, we, we got to thank uh, yeah. Dirty Dean, our yeah, latest... Pay, our our Dirty 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 who increased this pledge. Yes, so thanks did. a lot for that. Is, uh, He's a sea I monster it, now. Sea thank you, Dirty Dean. All right. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, this has been a very fun experiment that we've been doing for a decade, and... Uh, Thanks for letting us do it. I mean, you show up like, hey, keep doing it some more. And we do. And we're able to build our uh, fun little community. People who like sea monster jokes. Yes. <laughs> True story. Or, 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 or little Nikki. <laughs> or little Nikki. This is also this is also <laughs> true. All right, money big one. You got to go away. You got to go back to your day job at Intel. <laughs> <laughs> Team Blue gonna cut a motherfucker. Uh, Zwe, we got some leaks. We got to talk about this because Intel open source drive, like legitimate open source drivers, and we got to assume that this is gonna land on Linux. This is uh, the ZHPG DG. This is some bullshit. This is all right. Yes, it's Intel naming. Clearly, <laughs> yes, uh, confusing naming schemes. Thank you, Intel. Well, I, I mean, gigajoules it- of VRAM, gaming performance close to an NVIDIA. RTX 3080. Well, the PCB shot kind of leaked out. That's kind of a big chungus. It is. Look at all of my VRMs back here. I mean, it look it looks about like uh, the standard back of your uh, regular GPU of that level, but like with a lot more factory prototype shit on there. I yeah. think. Half, yeah. Yeah. The, there's some JTAG holes uh, in the uh, at the back there, so yeah, those probably won't make it into the final version. But yeah, whatever the price performance ends up being for these, and we did mention this on uh, on Wednesday, you won't be able to buy any of them unless, you know, they suck tremendously, at which point you might be able to buy some. Who knows? I don't Maybe. know, man. I'm looking at it like this, because Intel, you know, just going back and reading through this stuff and what, what they've said about the Z DG2, you know, they're confident that they can crush other media encoders that got my attention because up until now I'm like, hey man, maybe it plays some video games. That's fine. Oh, it can encode shit. Which we, you know, we know about Intel Quick Quick Sync, but it's dog shit. So if they got something better than that, they'd be like using AMD's Vapi. Also dog shit. Uh, Nvidia's has been walking around swinging big green. Like nobody, <laughs> nobody's touching us. We won the compute. <laughs> Here's some CUDA. NV encode, man. Uh, they dedicated silicon. So if they can tangle with them on that, you got my attention. Because if by crush, you mean it's better than NV, NV Inc. at X264 for streaming to Twitch, YouTube, and the like. Okay, I'll wait. Because this is what you've done just by saying that. I'm like, okay. It's not that I could go out and buy a video card today right now anyway, but even if I could, hearing this, I have 2060. I'm like, oh, wait, no, let's, see, let's see what you got going on. Because they're also talking about pricing being like the high end, somewhere around 500 wet stinky caches, which is still outrageous. But compared to the recent release of our 3080 TIs and the likes starting at 
twelve hundred dollars. Like we're gonna do Nvidia is trying to fucking normalize that. <laughs> Look at me, I'm the scalper now type shit, right? <laughs> so, you know, hey, here's the here, the theory. The theory going on right now is like they're thinking maybe a Q1 22 release is kind of hinted at and they're going to have good quantities. This is Intel. Intel does have experience when they're not fucking around trying to do 10 nanometer poorly in their own fabs instead of waiting like three years to like push that out to people who know what the hell they're doing. While they're, anyway, long story. Intel has experience shipping the fuck out of stuff. They can make a lot of things and get it to market. They got the supply chain. It's built there. So if they can deliver something that just trades blows, trades blows, doesn't have to crush it, but it can just tango with it in the ballpark. Yeah. 30, 70, not even a TI, a 30, 70. And if you can come in at some incredible low price, like four ninety nine, I guarantee you, if you can get this out in quantity for Christmas, by this time next year, you'll have 30% of the market <laughs> by Q4 2022 guaranteed. Maybe. Again, it's all it's all predicated though on like this thing better fucking eat dog shit at Ethereum mining, or if it's if it's priced <laughs> low, then they're just gonna get scooped up by all these scalpers that are already used again, to paying. Again, this goes back to my point. Like Nvidia doesn't have a fucking clue about mass manufacturing compared to Intel. Man, Intel's dealing with Dell and places like that and mm-hmm. laptop manufacturers. They yeah, Intel's been dominant for a very, very, very long time, and not everything had an NVIDIA video card. (laughs) Everything had an Intel processor. Again, (laughs) again, I I, I, it boils down to how many of these are they actually producing? How many of those do they figure they can actually sell? I don't know. These are these are questions that'll get answered in the future. It's it's a gamble. It's a gamble. Trust me, Intel's more than capable of fucking this up, right? Proper, but (laughs) if they are going to do the Haleolo and like drop these things in quantity at a reasonable, even if they do it at cost, just because hey, it's Intel, right? The just just get the name out there, well, and- just to get market because we're talking about the company that set like a billion dollars aside just to fuck around with AMD. So yeah, I, I could definitely see them pushing out for market penetration, new name, walking in, all that fun stuff. At this point especially after like the 3080 TIs and stuff like at 1200 bucks. Not going to happen at this point. I would almost buy one probably will buy one if they have comparative in V and code and something like their CUDA, not CUDA, but open seal performance is at least slightly better than my little 26. I'm going to buy one out of spite, man. I'm just like, Hey, I want to see regular prices as GPUs come back down under the stratosphere, because we were talking the pre-pre super shows and go back and listen to the whole thing of your patron. Um, I keep bringing this up. Like the most expensive video card I've ever bought was my 980, which was the fastest thing NVIDIA made at the time. And I was in the fetal position for a week after that, after dropping <gasps> La Gasp, $500 on it. C- um, cries in 1080 Ti. Yeah. <laughs> well, you should cry because you didn't yeah. buy a spare one for three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, there were three fifty. I know. Had I had I known, I would have gone with the twenty seventies though, just because mm-hmm. I, I want some. I want some of those uh, RTX noodles. Just just a just a little. You know, dynana dynana linear super sampling <laughs> is coming to Linux. Nanana, you're going to summon wolves. Nanana. Maybe <laughs> if, if, if we get jiggy with it. All right, but, Pedro, you got some uh, naysaying to do about this. So. Uh-huh. Come on, storm. Cloud. I, <laughs> that's the thing. I, I, I really don't, because at this point, this is all we know. This is the only leak that we had. And as far as we know, that could literally be any video card with a green PCB. But it is... It's interesting because I very much look forward to the future where people can brag about having an AMD processor and an Intel GPU and that actually being, uh, yeah, (laughs) that actually being something legitimate that you can uh, brag about. Yeah, I'm getting awesome performance on Linux with an AMD processor and an Intel GPU. (laughs) Can you imagine in a decade when it's like, oh man, yeah, remember when Intel made really good CPUs and AMD was the GPU guy and now this entire thing is switched? I wouldn't buy an Intel CPU. Nvidia is making (laughs) CPUs, man. But I I think I can speak for all three of us. We we have fuck are all brand loyalty for souls corporations. You give me the best product on the market at the best price with the best feature set. 
That's the one I'm buying. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And a uh, big wait, thank wait, you wait, wait. Uh, to Wimpy because that 1080 is going to rock on. Almost made it through a whole fucking episode with that. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> I thought we were going to skip by. <laughs> Um, but but never. but you know it is certainly the best on the market. It's the Atari VCS, baby. Speaking of AMD, man, yeah, we get a release date finally after you know. Remember when they released that first batch like thirty months ago? Yeah. Well, we got for the you want a piece of wood in your living room and a I do joystick with a single button on it and a controller that's probably cheap and plasticky. Wow, you just wait around for June fifteenth, twenty twenty one, and this is what I'm kind of excited about. If you want to get one for a reasonable price, if you don't want controllers or anything like that, you can pick one up for two ninety nine without the controllers. But it's compatible with other inputs, so I mean, that's it's got like Bluetooth on it. You have a good wireless joystick controller; it's going to be sixty. Oh, uh, okay, that's fun, whatever. But the real news here is the Atari speaker hat. Yes, this is the real juice of the <laughs> announcement. Users who buy the systems at Best Buy or GameStop will, I'm not kidding, get an Atari speaker head, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a fitted cap with some speakers on it and the underside of the brim. Now, how much would you pay? $300. Uh, nothing. <laughs> well, and, 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 and that's the thing. I really want that PCB. I don't give a shit about the Atari VCS. I don't want to play Missile Command Reloaded. I want a kick-ass little APU for a set-top box. Mm-hmm. Yes. That, that that that's very much what's F- yeah yeah that's what everyone seems to want it for because yeah you can put your m.2 drives in it i don't remember when um gamers nexus took it apart uh i think the ram was soldered it's in laptop or RAM. it wasn't uh, I, I, it's I laptop I, ram okay yeah. but you could upgrade the storage but hey yeah it's that like rando box in that form factor that doesn't suck a lot of juice that yes all right it's got network. Yeah. And and that, and that's it's, very it's, much the interesting bit. Assuming it's got you know, a Ryzen that CPU and a stock and a Vega <laughs> GPU. So like, yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to be like playing 2016 doom, but mm. you know, for an emulation box or just any, any sort of TV box, that is like the perfect, yeah. the perfect hardware setup. For it. You'll probably be able to play 2016 doom at 720 P on the lowest settings, but you probably w- will be able to play it. <laughs> mm. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. So, yeah. um, it's not easy being green. No, it's not. It's also not easy trying to reverse engineer uh, DirectX features using Vulkan. <laughs> but here we are. Uh, this is uh, Joshi's blog, froggy.es. Uh, you might know him from D9VK and Proton. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. Uh, so uh, inv- our AMD had um, added uh, some ray tracing support to RAD-V for um, Big Navi, uh, Baz. I'm not even going to take a crack at that last name. Just, no. <laughs> oh, I could do that. Man. What was it? Do, do, um, do it, do it, do it. Nine Voonhausen. Nine Voonhausen? Okay. Yeah. Good enough. Uh, yeah, so Nine Voonhausen got uh, ray tracing working on Vega, or on Navi 2 GPUs, and um, so uh, Josh, he's talking about, hey, uh, what, what, is, what does this actually mean in terms of feature set? Two instructions that you can theoretically implement via the rest of the hardware that's available on older Navi or even Polaris GPUs. So uh, this is a, bro- a blog post describing the process he went through in order to actually get ray tracing working on Vulkan under, um, under older AMD cards. And he succeeded. Um, it's quite an interesting read. I'll leave that to you. The link to that is in our show notes. But you might be asking, does it perform? Shrug emoji, right? Like he doesn't have he doesn't have a lot of hardware to test on. Theoretically, all the tests he did pass. Uh, there's still the Vulcan conformance test that needs to be done. This still needs to be integrated with something like Vulcan or uh, what was it D D three D V K Proton. Listen, man, and, all, all uh, I'm going to say is, you know what? Fuck you. I'm a triangle. Yeah, fucking triangles, <laughs> man. But uh, the, at the at the end of the blog post, there's a little bit of a shade, a little bit of shade that uh, Joshi's uh, tossing at AMD. They're like, "Hey, why aren't you exposing this stuff on your your proprietary driver? Why are you locking Linux users out of this feature that ostensibly they're paying for? And even if the performance is bad, don't you want a reference point to say like, "Hey, also, ray tracing on this hardware sucks." Why do you have light blue for your fucking highlight color? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Some, something about frogs. Yeah, no, the, deservedly that last bit about AMD uh, getting some shade thrown at them, they they deserve that because as someone who had 
nothing but uh, ATI and then AMD GPUs and laptops going through university. Yeah, no, I, I I had to do a lot of FGLRX patching to get them to compile against the current uh, kernel at the time. So, y- yeah, and this, this makes those GPUs, older uh, AMD GPUs, then maybe you wouldn't get any of the new stuff, a lot more of an interesting proposition on Linux now that you can actually have new functionality, be it ray tracing or Vulkan support on older architectures. Basically, ever since the community took over, this is it's just, just much more keep interesting. In mind, keep in mind, <laughs> 43 to 47 frames per second. Quake 2 at 1080p on a 2060. Oh, man. 29. 720p. So, <laughs> they, so jo- Joshi does bring up, like, well, we still got a bit of work to actually get this working with uh, Q2 RTX, but that is on the roadmap. So I look yes. inter- interesting I look stuff. Forward, running it on my Atari VCS. You could? Yes. Theoretically. <laughs> yeah. So good news, everyone. Uh, Everyone wants to start streaming or they want to talk about it. More importantly, everyone wants to approach me with that conversation. So I've been thinking about it. Go do it. Bye. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't do the group huddles for people thinking about doing shit like that. But if you do decide to take the plunge, you're probably going to be using OBS Studio. And there's a hot new version now. 27 point not. Bunch of new features, bug fixes, all that other fun stuff. But the big news for... Linux is there's now support for Wayland. We got the pipe wire support. We got the video support. So if you have something that doesn't rhyme with it, NVIDIA, like AMT or Intel, you can play around with that. They've added service integration and browser doc support. So you can throw your Twitch chat into your um, just mainframe. You don't have to keep a separate Discord or anything like that up. Well, I guess you might if you don't have a Twitter bot and a Discord bot. And they've also fixed the VST paths because that was still somehow broken. Um, Linux, if you are doing the right thing and using, you know, noise gate equalization compression on your live streams like a normal person should. So you don't sound like some amateur punk. I'm just happy for the undo support control. I would really like to be able to (laughs) control Z stuff. Uh, and I mean, I mean, just in general, in real life, not just in OBS, but no, here's, here's like one of the things, man, Uh, I'm very happy about, uh, the undo because it's one of those things you don't realize like how did i not like function yeah. with this until like two weeks ago I, this has been you know i just built the get versions uh save my ass i completely deleted an entire scene where it's like fuck do i have that backed up am i gonna how do i even get that in there control z like, yes. control z baby that needs was, to be implemented in more feels. things that was a good yeah. feels Pedro, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you've been able to play around with it as a fellow content creator, streamer person. Yes, influencer. I, the, um, yes, <laughs> that, that's a that's a, uh, that's a stretch. Un, un, under the talk. influencer, that's off the, under the influencer. <laughs> yeah, under yes. the influence, absolutely. Uh, the yeah, no, the Tuesday stream that was actually streamed with OBS twenty seven. Now, admittedly, I'm not running Wayland or and Pipewire. It is installed, but it's not on. How dare you uh, in KDE Neon system, you monster! <laughs> So, yeah, it was just running X and just typical uh, Pulse audio. So, y- yeah, that, it worked just fine. So as far as I'm concerned, it, it, it works. Mm. There's that. <laughs> How did you install it? Where did you get it? Because I know you didn't compile it. The, the PPA. They, they, they have a PPA. A PPA I've for, been trying for OBS. For what distribution, maybe? Uh, the Ubuntu. Ah, that, Ubuntu. That, that's, there we go. There we go. All right, <laughs> that is the uh, distribution that PPAs are usually for. <laughs> listen, I've known not some, always. I, I've known some morons that have tried to add some PPAs to Debian, and they're like, "Why is everything on oh. fire?" I'm like, "Reasons." Mints. You can enable that, yes, but I would recommend. <laughs> there, there's no enabling. You can shoehorn that in there, like with force. There's no like, oh yes, oh, would you like to use PPA? Don't do it. Uh, danger PPAs. But yes, the only officially supported. If you're going to show up in the OBS Discord and ask for help, that's the one that's supported. That's going to be the first question. For, yep. Okay, question one is like, no, we cannot uh, make it work on a Chromebook. 
but there's a bot now that detects the word Chromebook <laughs> and tells you that. Mm. <laughs> and but number two is the only officially supported. Like I'm not going to show up and be like, hey, this version. Of, well, I, I'm going to do the development channel, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to show up in like Linux main. Be like, hey, this is bro. What are you running it on? Uh, I don't know. Ubuntu twelve oh four. Kali OS. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, Kali Linux. <laughs> so keep that in mind. If you're on Ubuntu, on the men's, on uh, Pop! OS, anything like that, install the official PPA and use that. Look, you're welcome, OBS team. I did you good. Now, on to wine. Yes, version 6.10 is now available, and uh, it's not that big of a release. Actually, Shut the up, you bugs fix. It's got fixes for Trax Media. <laughs> <laughs> it does have the only thing it cares about. and MS and, um, applications. D- yeah, and the thing that actually caught my attention was at the bottom. You can now play GTA 4 in FreeBSD. Uh, nice. But yeah, the <laughs> they've updated the Mono engine to support version 6.2. So Wine Mono 6.2 <laughs> is a thing. Uh, the Wine Pulse library is now uh, a portable executable instead of just being what wine used to do which was just the links to the actual system things now it's an actual portable executable and it runs self-contained within wine hopefully making the progress towards uh skirting around anti-cheats feasible oh, so man. that we can play Listen, those multiplayer games that we're we can still waiting on that but i do yeah. want to hit again like in all seriousness i have a real question because they do say that they fixed a performance regression in track mania nations forever how could you tell? Um, <laughs> <laughs> From debug stats. No, I'm just saying, man, because I'm running this at 3840 by, I mean, it's 11, 14 year old, 13 year old game at 3840 by 2160 with everything. It, it's little graphic settings can do it like 170 FERPs, which it looks good for an old game, but I mean, it was always a simple looking yeah, game. Yeah, no, it's more CPU bound because it just uses the one thread. So I'm guessing that's what they fixed uh oh, the oh, i guess maybe if you're running it like an intel atom <laughs> yeah if you're running anything or maybe an old amd fx cpu oh, uh, hang on uh-huh. hey, let me save somebody the email <laughs> or maybe somebody's playing a 13 year old game on 13 year old system right? because that's when, yeah all right fine <laughs> fair <laughs> ah yes the puritans <laughs> yeah listen man i've been broke <laughs> I just I just look yeah, forward to it. Too. I look forward to next week when we get the Proton GE rebase on this and everything is everything that was fixed is broken again. <laughs> but uh but that, but that, that that's what Proton's for though. That's it's it's Wild West so that they can get shit working and upstream into vanilla wine. So we played um enemy territory a couple times, didn't we? We played around with it. The, I think it was, was Return, Return to, Castle, to Castle Wolfenstein. Yes. Not we've, enemy yes. territory specifically. Oh, yeah. We've never done any live stream with the OG enemy. No, I don't think we ever did OG enemy territory. It was just uh, Return mm-hmm. to Castle Wolfenstein multiplayer. We, we used to play but, the shit out of that game back in the day because it's a, hey, it was a Linux game in the 90s, man, and it worked. <laughs> Indeed. Um, but yeah, so Return to Castle Wolfenstein, it got open sourced, uh, and there was an expansion for it, enemy territory, that... Most people remember it for the multiplayer aspect. Apparently, there was a single player mode that got scrapped for time and budget. And the people at Real RTCW have uh, lovingly recrafted this it. This leads with, uh, me to believe the, that there's a fake RTCW. Maybe. That, that's what it's implying. Uh, I guess. The, yeah, they're, they're implying that everything else is fake. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but yeah, uh, apparently some of the game logic, like the actual campaign logic for the single player game was released at some point. So they've taken this. Uh, they're trying to turn this into an actual campaign for uh, Wolf Return to Castle Wolfenstein. They're actually looking for some voice talent. If you want to be one of the people who voices the recruitable NPCs, uh, you can go contact that link to that is all in the show notes at the bottom of their blog post. So, yeah, I guess th- this is this is kind of neat. It's always cool to see like games that sort of died in development hell get a bit of a second life due to fan mods. Yeah, it's going to be coming out November 30th, 2021 and I am RTC'd out. Oh, it's gonna, there you go. It's going to be available on Android, PS Vita, Oculus, uh, Penguins, and Apples. No, no, it's going to be available in Windows, Windows, Android, Android, PS Vita, Oculus, Mac, and Linux. <laughs> this is why you're not invited to parties. 
<laughs> I mean, you, you got to specify which version of Windows 10. <laughs> Actually, so so did you did you hear what micro, just complete, complete random aside. Apparently what Microsoft is doing now is the 10 point whatever. The, what, the whatever is now yeah, the actual Windows get, well, version. Windows 10 is the last mm-hmm. version of Windows. Yeah, yeah, no, so yeah. They kind of turned themselves into that one. <laughs> well, so 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 now what? So now what it is is it's the thing after the point is the actual version of Windows, and it's just going to be Windows Ten forever. So yeah, you should you you should always specify which version of Windows you know, Ten the you're using. Probably exists, and somebody proudly wears it. Absolutely, Windows 100%. Ten forever. <laughs> I mean, that might that might be an article you might find on Tech Radar, but there are other types of articles as well. What kind? Like. Like PC gaming on Linux, how hard can it be? Question mark. Three hours later, everything's on fire. No, uh, so home. Uh, this is this is an article uh, posted on uh, Tech Radar. We, we see we see these periodically. It's from Richard Devine, and he talks about, "Hey, I wanted to try a new operating system. I got tired of uh, running Windows, so I'm gonna." Try running some games on Linux and see how that works. And uh, for the most part, the guy has a fairly successful time. I will say Homeboy made the classic mistake of trying to use NTFS 3G as like a main That's data drive. That's the best file system. It doesn't fragment. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Here, here, consider this a PSA, LGC Cares. NTFS 3G is there to help you get your data off of your Windows drive so that you can move to a better file system or oh. to occasionally unfuck a system because you need to use Linux to rescue but a Windows li- machine. Listen, uh, Jordan, I, I don't actually run Linux. I'm just doing this for an article, man. Come on. I, I, so he, I mean, to his credit, he reformatted his drive. Uh, I, I, again, other random aside, we really do need a better cross-platform file system. I, I hate having to tell people to reformat their drives. And it, we do. It's called their, Google it, Drive. It's, I mean, something that can <laughs> sur- sur- be directly accessible on a on a disk. Uh, but F2FS, yeah, uh, you'd think at this point there would be Windows drivers for F2FS. That, no, that, man. That Strider, NTFS. Strider, Strider has, uh, uh, here's a hidden bug in uh, Lutra. See, it's like Lutra will scream. It better be audible, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and you know, you know what? To, to his point at the end of the, or to his credit at the end of the article says, it's not actually that hard. And honestly, it isn't. There's a bit, there's a bit of a learning curve. But once you get past that, and once you start getting into the Linux way of solving problems, all of a sudden, it, it, all of a sudden, things begin to open up, and you start to realize all the cool options that are available. Really? So, shit. Mm. So what? Uh, no, man. Uh, it's ego. It's ego fucking with you, baby. Um, every time I see, every time, 100% accuracy. When somebody's bitching about audio on Linux, it's because you thought you were going to walk in to an operating system over the weekend. Oh, you, you fucking got that. You don't have this. You don't. You're not prepared for it. <laughs> You're going to have to RTFM. You're not going to click your way through. You're not going to, you can't click your way to success. You're, you're going to be using terminals. That's part of life on Linux. Quit fucking around. Also desktop, desktop developers, quit putting audio shit in like your little fucked up GUI. All right. Stop. <laughs> use Pavu control. If you're going to be doing that, use pipe wire. Whatever. Okay. You might be able to fuck around with pipe wire. Quit doing that with um pulse. But to Jordan's point, Gaming on Linux. If you know how to Linux, the gaming's the side thing, because this is the type of show that we do, where people just run Linux anyway. Hey, look, there's games. Let's talk about it. We're not like, hey, Linux gaming, guys, get rid of whatever. We're like, fucking run whatever you want. We just do a show for people who run Linux day in and day out, and it's not difficult. Even Pedro can do it. And I, yes. and I, there's, there's, there's a lot of beginner friendly resources out there. I, I fucking hate the point. Oh, you need to be using the terminal to be under Linux. I think that's a tooling problem. I think that can be fixed. I think there you're are a lot of good people if you tell them differently. I think if with, uh, with enough today, tooling in place, you today, don't need right to, now. No, yes. you are no, no, this point. I am, I am, I am, that's not what I'm saying though. Mr. Putting words in my mouth. I'm saying <laughs> with time and tooling, there is a way to do it, but yes, we're not there yet. Exactly. All I wanted was clarification to your point. So we didn't get yes. the, um, yeah, but nope. like, 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 but again, I, I am, I am anti the position that this, this, this needs to be a hard requirement. We can, we can ha- be a platform that can do both. That's the power of Linux is that it works for you. Yes. It doesn't work against you. And the issue, um, I don't want to say the only issue, uh, reason that's never going to gel is because yes, there will, but there'll be six different solutions to do it without I, opening the terminal. 
<laughs> I mean, if you hell, look, look at half of the shit that exists as a GUI app on Windows. They're just they're visual basic wrappers for command line utilities. Yes. This is this is this and has there's been the case tons forever. of them to do the exact same thing. The the fragmentation problem is as big on Windows as it is on Linux. It's a bullshit argument and always has been. So mm. yeah. No. <laughs> and as far as this particular article goes, this is not by far, this is not the worst that we've seen. There's always going to be play on Linux OS. Also from Tech Radar. So. <laughs> Like, like, like I said, you you, you, you got to take the good with the bad with these non-Linux specific media outlets. All right. Coming up next, we wiggle a feather at the end of the stick and try to get through a finish line. At least that's what I tried to do. Feather sticks. Welcome back to the Cheer Acquisition. This week, we are taking a look at Neon Wings Air Race, developed by Fubinalvo or SX The One. I guess, uh, published by Fubinalvo, uh, done on the UD engine. You could pick it up for about five bucks. What is it? Want to race without the constraints of the ground? The neon wings is your game. That is what, that is definitely one way to describe. I mean, they could have just named it. Fuck physics. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, neon wings air race is an adrenaline filled fast paced air racing game with a lot of single and multiplayer fun. We got to thank, uh, the developers for sending us some keys, I believe. Uh, and I guess I get to go first. So, on Fedora 34, 64 bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080Ti launches out of the box. There is no windowed mode unless you own the prefs file. Unity games, why? Why? It, uh, it eats poo at UHD. The Steam overlay says that it's hitting about 90 frames a second. Uh, the frame delivery is not quite there. Um, much smoother at 1080p, usually averages about 150 frames a second, which is pretty nice. Um, it controls like ass. Um, if you're using Steam input, apparently, if you're on a DualShock 4, you get inverted sticks, whether you like it or not. Too fucking bad. Um, turn off Steam Overlay, that goes away. Um, and yeah, there's there's a there's a magical combination of mouse sensitivity and braking intensity that is very specific to you. But eventually, if you dick around with it enough, you'll find something that will actually make the game semi playable. I I just could not use the controller. I was just crashing into shit. I had to use a mouse, and it was like pretending I was playing with Hot Wheels as a, as a six year old. Also, a lot of carpal tunnel pain. Not not like a six year old. Um, the soundtrack is there. It's kind of generic electro. I don't know. It's it's harmless. I ended up putting a podcast on because that was a little more engaging than the soundtrack. And visually, it's it's neon. It's not doing anything super crazy. It's not quite distance level of pretty, but it's not ugly to say the least. Um, fun wise, did I did I mention it controls like butt? I mean, I thought Q3 Rally wasn't great, but it's it's not this. Also, I think I found a bug. I tried to do a time trial in the desert level and the game just eats shit and freezes. So uh, stay away from that. Um, And honestly, when the driving is this bad, it's hard to talk about all the other shit in the game because there's like a base building segment. You can unlock ships and walk around and upgrade your hangar and upgrade your ships and all this stuff. But it all requires engaging with the core mechanic that I hate. So I got there. There's also a problem with the game in that. Um, if you touch anything outside of the track, you will die period. And it will kill your time. It will kill your race. I kind of wish you could just like bounce off shit. Like give, give me a warning bounce, right? I can't just perfect it, especially when I'm learning the game. I don't know. I'm going to give it one share. I did not enjoy this game. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of that. Uh, it, for me over here on the Ryzen 7 3700 X and the GTX 1080, it launched out of the box. It outright refuses to hit 144 at 2560 by 1440. When you're in a race proper, you get like 120 ish at best. And, uh, yeah, uh, the turn sensitivity as when you actually turn the the ship it's either tied or dependent on the frame rate uh, which means that if there's a dip or if the frame time increases the same amount of movement of the analog stick or the mouse will instantly swerve you in that direction and you will hit whatever building you happen to be flying close to which happens very very often fuck fuck. 
Yes, it couldn't have been um, more perfectly timed because you can see that happening right now if you're watching the video version. And locking the frame rate to 60 helped, but every now and then something will cause the frame time to jump a little bit and you're in the wall again. And you can't rebind controls! So, yeah, you have to accelerate with the R2 key or uh, with the uh, left mouse button because fuck you, that's why. Uh, I can't honestly say that the graphics justify the performance dips because look at it. And a little bit of culling in the environment when you're going at full speed would have probably helped the frame, the frame rate a lot. But hey, as for the fun, well, uh, you think after, you know, 25 years, people would have figured out uh, how to make a good airship racing game that doesn't start with wipe and ends in out. Uh, considering that the first wipeout came out in 1995, uh, at this point, people should have the mechanics, camera, and controls down pat, but no, 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 they do not. Um... There's there's clearly a bit more to it than I would have expected, and Neon Wings is not a, a good air racing game. It reminds me of the racing level of uh, Crimson Skies. It's either the first or the second level, uh, and it's like someone really liked that level and wanted to make a whole game about it, which... Um, yeah, uh, it, it maybe maybe it's my nostalgia speaking, but I had least uh, I had less problems uh, actually finishing the racing level in Crimson Skies than I had even just controlling the ship in uh, Neon Wings. Uh, it, it wouldn't I guess it wouldn't be that bad if you know you weren't expected to do some very tight turns or um, fly into a pipe or into a derelict uh, flat uh, apartment building. It, yeah, it, 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 it gets in your way a lot. And then, then there's the camera. In lazy mode, it clips through your ship. If you hit the brakes, the camera will clip into your ship so you can't see shit. And then, uh, <laughs> in strict mode, it, it, Okay, it's a bit stilted, but at least that's uh, the camera mode that you're looking at right now. It's a bit stilted, but you can uh, actually see what's going on and you always know what to expect because it's always going to be at that distance in that exact position when compared to your ship. You can expect that. The... Default camera is kind of pointless because it is the in-between point, so it isn't actually accomplishing anything. Uh, as much as I want to like it, because this is a genre that is severely unrepresented on Linux, I I can't one chair. Do I still have a camera? Yeah, I do. Good on you, little Nikon. <laughs> Good on you, fan. So over here on Debian Bullseye, Debian 11, man. Uh, hey, look, it's a Vulcan title. I found that out because, you know, it runs like hammered ass unless you have a compositor enabled. This is a Unity problem, so I'm not blaming the developer on this one. No. Unfortunately, even at 1080p, this graphical juggernaut swings from 66 to 170 because reasons, shrug emoji on that, and it's not smooth. Like, I fired up Mango Hood to take a peek and double check them frame times. I'm getting some jumps and, you know, it's enough to piss you off is exactly where it's at. Now, this is for the 2060 and a Threadripper combo, so maybe I just don't have the right system requirements for it. Uh, no winded mode, Jordan pointed that out, so I'm not going to be streaming it along with Pretty much anybody else. I, I found one stream on um, Twitch. So you got that going for you. Uh, X clone S controls worked out of the box. Good on that. Can't rebind anything. Uh, but you probably want to use your uh, gerbil to navigate the main menu unless you really hate yourself because it, it's kind of like an afterthought with that navigation. Now, oh, did either of you notice that you can navigate and like walk around the hangar if you hit escape? Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I found that out by accident. Now, Talk about fun it real says quick. so on the main screen. <laughs> Did the uh, person in charge of like controls for this game, like controls and physics, did they just like nope out like halfway through the game? Because this ship is detached from any of that nonsense, man. It's like navigating like a model ship glued to the end of a stick that's like jiggling around and you're trying to race using that mechanic. Now, I was able to dick around with the sensitivity and the braking because that's the thing you can't adjust good job on that i got things into a playable ish state but only just now 
I tried the assist mode with steering. I cut that on high as it would go. Yes, that exists. And that kind of speaks more to the problem than I ever could. Now, my next totally legitimate complaint is going to revolve around the topic of consistency, something that Jordan brought up as well. Why can I take a few rockets from the AI, like straight up my bomb, and just keep on trucking along? I mean, it doesn't note me completely when that happens. But touching a goddamn thing, insta-splode, boom, that's just what happens. Now, I'm just going to say the everything is lava approach can just die in a fire, pun intended, deal with it. And I'm reasonably sure I know why you took that approach. Wink. I'm just saying, man. There is multiplayer. Uh, it's currently in beta, but no one really wants to suffer through this with their friends. Um, you don't really want to inflict that on anyone. So, yeah, even at $4.99, man, I, I, I'm being honest. Here's a real opinion. That's 85 minutes of my life. I'm not getting back, man. You know, just, just a solid one. And I don't like, I don't like saying that. That doesn't give me any joy no. whatsoever because there's an idea here. Like, yeah, you, you, there's you, you, art you, you could, here. You like, could make this a good game. It's like flying Mario Kart, right? It's the flying portion of Sonic All-Stars Racers, but that just that, right? Like you, there, there, there's yeah, a recipe it, it for like a, a fun game. Yeah, it, it is absolutely uh, the skeleton of a game is definitely in here, but that is literally all we're getting right now. And I guess, OK, it is not an expensive game, so I thought at least maybe it'll be like four pounds worth it. It wasn't. It really, really wasn't. My honest first <laughs> response, because I bought this game. We got a spare key, <laughs> by the way. I bought this several months back. <laughs> Um, just, Hey, I wanted to give the uh, developers some support. It was an early access and Pedro's like, yo, let's do this for review. I'm like, how was that out of early access? Oh no. And he yeah. Really I looked at it. It's like, Oh, it's not early access. Oh yeah. Mm. yeah that, this, that's the thing though. This, this really feels like something that has been in early access for about eight months and needs like another six. But we've definitely seen, um, on more than one occasion, some just getting pushed out the door. Like, fuck it. I'm done with it. I don't, maybe that's the it case. Could have maybe. been the case. Been. Yes. Unfortunately. But nothing of the emails of the devel that the developer sent me seemed to indicate that. And yeah, clearly a lot of work was put into this. Uh, you can see that the, uh, the environments are very detailed, but the gameplay, the bit that's important, it, it's, it's not very good. Performance, got to be able to yeah. buy stuff. It's 2021 multiplayer. Hey, it's a nice touch, but this is also one of those harkening back to earlier in the show. Uh, Should have been there at lunch. I, I mean, even, even even I could I could deal with the bad performance if the controls were not just so if bad. It was I incredibly think, fun to play and had a good feel to it. Yeah, yeah you can overlook mm -hmm. all this shit. You can yeah, make a lot that, of things. Yeah, but that, there's that, nothing that, that, here I'm willing to make excuses for. Yeah, that that's the problem. Is the the core gameplay, the thing that you're actually here to do when you pay five dollars for this game, mm -hmm. is not good or satisfying, and that's. And at that point, why bother talking about anything else, right? Indeed. All right. Well, coming up next, we have silence in the house. Yeah. And if you too would like to give me all manner of different kinds of cancer from your really bad puns, there's a very easy way you can do that. You can ask Jordan and uh, he'll just do it live on air. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> yeah, no, the best way to get in touch with us is to go to linksgamecast.com. You hit the contact button and there's a little form you got to fill. Uh, just pick LGC Weekly as the show that you want to send your hate mail to and you'll get featured right here, right now. Uh, if you are a game developer and uh, if you'd like us to poo poo you all over, all over your game or, you know, maybe actually very much enjoy it, just make sure you send us three keys or something that we can all play it's not that hard it's pretty hard yeah <laughs> speaking of people who <laughs> forgot they were muted uh can i did that because we played a game called silent house help me remember which one that was it was the roguelike <laughs> that you can do. replace Oh, it was oh, the, a roguelike the, the that you parts. can replace your body parts yes yeah, this was true yeah, yeah. i mean it, it was an interesting 
thing. I mean, listen, I mean, it, it, it genuinely got me a bit cross because I replaced my head with a sword and I had to suffer everything that goes along and with And then that. you couldn't see anything. Yeah. <laughs> I, listen, I just want to replace my head with a sword in real life. That would solve all my problems. Jesus. I mean, I'm willing to, to support your GoFundMe. Um, <laughs> Yes, please. Right, right. So the, so the developer got back to us. Um, they said, uh, this is from Kai. They say, hey, thanks for playing the House of Silence and giving it your honest opinions. And I mean, yeah, we we're, we we don't try to like shit on games just because we're we're mean spirited, cruel, joyless monsters. That's part of it. But well, not you know, just no, that. No, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, that, 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 that's a good component of it. But beyond that, we're re- we're really like providing legitimate feedback, right? Like, um, we're we're all very different people. We all have different criteria for what we consider a good game. And I th- I think that's like a good uh, that's a good mindset to be in when you're writing and consuming game reviews, right? Like, cause well, there it's, it's highly is. subjective, but you yeah. know that we've absolutely yes. ran across, um, multiple times. We've been doing this for a decade. If you're just tuning in, this is not new. Uh, you get like, we've had some really good feedback from developers. Like, Hey man, thanks. You know, you mm-hmm. didn't like some things. Maybe I'll take a look at things or like, Hey, fuck you. But thanks for taking a look at my game. Then you get the, um, be fucking grateful scrub that I tap that export button and you haven't gotten one of those in a while though. It's been a yeah. while, but we've <laughs> run into it, man. And, um, but the, the landscape has definitely changed because you know what? 10 years ago, we were a little bit fucking grateful that we, we you didn't that with, you could overlook some shit now with the tools you have available. We got SDL two people need to learn to use it. And, um, proton. Proton. I can just play. I can just play your yeah. game, whether you want me to or not. Uh, yeah, I am sure somebody from Feral's like eat a bag of dicks, Fong. <laughs> yeah, Feral's going. Uh, that's good. There goes my Linux business. Okay. <laughs> Which then, then again, then again, you know, somebody at a uh, virtual programming's like, oh, get wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, virtual, virtual programming can suck it. As far mm-hmm. as I'm concerned. So yeah, the uh, no uh, in the House of Silence, I was the only one who actually enjoyed, very much enjoyed the game. Um, Jordan had issues because it didn't really change anything from the um, the rogue formula, and Ven just doesn't like roguelikes in general. So there's I, that. I, I, I tried to play it. <laughs> I, I know, man. I went through it, and I got done. I'm like, hey, this, this is my experience. And like, are you just describe what a roguelike was? And I go, go fuck you too. Um, yeah, I, 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 I guess, I guess more, my my issue was more like cons- considering like the abundance of roguelikes exactly like this. Yeah, well, this is true. I I'm maybe, not maybe say, a little more meat. I don't necessarily have a well, I guess a semi unique perspective because like I I didn't fuck around a lot with wine, and I've been running like twenty plus years. I mean, a lot of these game genres is avoided me man because i, I wasn't going to go and buy a video game console i went and did other shit now i get like <laughs> games to play i'm like ah this thing and Pedro's like yeah it's just a roguelike scrub i've been playing this whole time <laughs> uh, I mean, your description in the review was yeah you just described a roguelike the moral of the story is <laughs> if i haven't seen it it's new to me <laughs> hey pedro hey could you could you help me out with something? Uh, I, I I can try. <laughs> See, that's somebody. That's my boy. It's knows that's somebody who knows he's about to get set up. And he's like, all right, fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> I mean, well, if you're gonna I'm, throw me under the bus, fucking throw me under the bus already. <laughs> Just get it over you, with. You you can't throw me under the bus if I don't dive in front of it first. <laughs> no, but you can't just read this next one because it's kind of short and to the point. Yes, Igor says war uncut. Man, who's into like war? I, I mean, <laughs> listen, not everybody's circumcised. Man, I mean. <laughs> Lucky, <laughs> very much uncircumcised right here. <laughs> well, la di da, Mister Intact Penis. Why don't you go waving it around, bragging to people? Uh, Twitch. That's why. <laughs> you can do it in a hot tub. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> Everything's better not, man. We need to hot tub. It's, it's, like, it's, it's like the hole in the sheet, but for Twitch. Okay, now, now we, yes. we need the, the, the entire lower third hot tub overlay. We're like, ah, it's, hot tub. it's fine. 
It's technically a hot tub. <laughs> I I was very impressed by the um, not sidetrack. Now that we have a category, I didn't. <laughs> I've never sought out a hot tub. I wouldn't even like. Maybe you just search hot tub before that. But now that you give me a category, I wouldn't take a look because I don't give. I just sort by least viewers and. That's where the gold is. That's where the good stuff is. And there's also <laughs> people just straight up playing games, but they, you know, they've chroma to keep themselves out into a hot tub in the quarter. <laughs> well, I, got, I gotta, I gotta get me like an old timey bathing suit to wear on one of these trips. Like the, like the, like the, like the strappy one, oh. you know, like the, yep. like the, yeah. <laughs> like the full vest with a yeah. t-shirt and shorts. Yeah. That's a peasant. Looks like more. I'm going to show up in a diving bell. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Full scuba gear with a respirator and everything. Oh, wow. Well, uh, that's like old school. I, I, like, I, I, with like a, how, how are you going to get the control surface in, in the in the bubble and do it with like the helmet? <laughs> Power gloves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no it's it, it's entirely like connect based motion control switching and like, yeah, no, it, it'll be sound activated. I'll just smash my head against the bell in different areas. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you just scream in the bell, oh, and it resonates. <laughs> Oh, oh man! So back to the question: uh, What were uncut? we talking about? Uncut. Yes, yeah, this is how you do it. Professionalism. Um, yeah, uncut is a series that we do for. It's a bit of patron thing, and you get like. Uh, if you like this and you're like, shit, I don't have time to watch the live because it's like a four or five hour long episode. And you just want to go back and watch like the video version or you want to listen to the podcast version. That is always been up for patrons. Now, I guess what you're asking is when we get some spare time, some breaks and what we post on YouTube. Like, I, I'm not trying to squeeze anybody for money here. I'll post one. But every time we do that, and there's like 20 people that watch it. And if you know anything about YouTube, how it works, because I... We don't make shit on YouTube. We gladly share those numbers. If we make 30 bucks in a month, you're like, oh, what do we do with our newfound wealth? I'm um, nowhere near that. <laughs> but I'll release them. But what happened, I care about discoverability and YouTube has always hated us, which is, it's interesting. It's interesting. And um, when you release something, you get like 20 fucking views on it. That weighs onto your next video. So, Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's posted in Discord for everyone. So, yeah, I, I guess if it's like that important to you, man, just be patient. They'll show up or just, uh, like, what's it cost? A regular sub on Twitch is like a buck for a month, man. You can go back and watch yep. them. Yeah. Uh, it's $5 yep. or one up. Man, I got like, <laughs> or, 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 it's or, enough or, where or, I don't <laughs> care. I just hit <laughs> sub. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Or, or, you know what? Subscribe to the Patreon. Get access to all this stuff. This, uh, no, Discord. Man, yeah, that's listen. four dollars a month. So yeah. Shut <laughs> up! You're putting stuff behind paywalls, Jordan. <laughs> yes. Also, yes, it's I a am. lot of fucking extra work to put those motherfuckers. <laughs> but hey, if you're just patient, they'll get released. Like as soon as I got like a decent break and we don't have another show, we're just actually putting out a lot of content. Considering it's the three of us and our editing and uh, production department consists of this old man right here. So yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for bringing it up. And yeah, yep, stay tuned. Keep an eye out or like, hey, man, got in line or whatever. Because we're really trying to shake you down for that $5 a month. There's a lot of we, Linux we, content we are, we are, coming out from old We are trying to shake men, those quarters so. out of you. <laughs> uh, that's going to do it, beautiful people. We need some new hate mail for next week because if you can't tell, it's like, well, I'm saving those two for next week. That's the last little bit. <laughs> Scraping the bottom yep. of the barrel. Send us a message, leave a YouTube comment, all that fun stuff. Contact form is the way to make sure that we actually see it. Hit us up on YouTube well, if you got something like that. Message but us on Patreon. That's just guaranteed. That's where you have a yeah. conversation. Yep. Or in Discord if you want to fucking shot, because I'm not going to try to talk to somebody at 250 words at a time, man. <laughs> but is it? Is that playing? There it is. Now it is. Hey. On that bombshell. <laughs> Cue the music. You can always find us uh, kicking off live 730 for patrons. Pre pre super shows and tune in if you're Death Note or above. If you were an executive producer, you get a live video feed. I don't know why you want it, but it's there, baby. If you want to get in touch with me, oh, 830 back here on Twitch each and every Saturday. If you want to get in touch with me, just at Vin Stone on Twitter. Uh, use the contact form. If you want to get in touch with anyone, we'll make sure it gets to the right person. 
And uh, at Vin, we have a federated timeline thing, mass.linuxgamecast.com. Also, IRC is completely open at, uh, what is it, irc.libra.chat? IRC Which Libra time? chat? Yes. L- Linux Gamecast. Pound Linux Gamecast. Yeah. Pound us. <laughs> Pound. <laughs> Smoke hash. I am Jordan Spung. <laughs> I'm still trying to replace my head with a sword. And if you want to see my adventures in doing so, you can follow me on Twitter at the Burning Fool. Or I'm going to be streaming, hopefully streaming a lot more in the coming weeks. Follow me on twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. And if you'd like me, uh, if you'd like me, like yes. me, like me, like the, me, like the, me. I want like you to replace me. your head with a nunchuck. <laughs> Uh, no, let's not go Turn there. Uh, if you'd like to, for some reason, uh, follow me on Twitter. That's at unaccounted4. Uh, I don't really post all that much. I'll retweet some stuff occasionally, but that that that's about it. Oh, and the announcements for when the show is live. Mm-hmm. That, that, that happens, too. All right, everyone. We're going to roll the credits. Deal with it. Bye. Oh, hey, <laughs> we, we got to the right ones this week. Excellent. You'll have to see it. <laughs> Well, I guess you guys love to see us as well because you continue to support us week after week after week. I probably misspelled something. No, I didn't. All right. Keep going. Yeah. We we, we, got to thank our lovely advisors, Omegas and Artharin. And that's it. We got our executive producers, (laughs) uh, LDS Farmram. How did you get all that out in one breath? (laughs) <laughs> Atomic Ass Mike G, MT, Drummer 7, Holy Toast, and our lone little Nikki fan, the one person who actually still likes that movie, Darkwing. Fuck you, man. And That's the Sea Monsters, movie. Jack B, Renault, Ryder X Machina, Trudgy, Verzenuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Kyle Linux, and the Death Notes, Nova K, Bissell B, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System T, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresney, Kim, Smashley, uh, Chris, Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.1, Stephen B, and Dirty Dean. Doom, <laughs> doom, doom. We got a um, gang of cheerlings. Keeping us loud live, independent. TN underscore mag, Ryan TG, but Scott, Martin W. Rowe, hit. Flounir. Egal, Dementor, Zeno, Berlink, Lutris, Jack, minus nine, and Dementor. Indigestion. Ah. Monica, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we, we made it. We did. 460. Next week, we hit another, uh, another episode number of a video card that I've owned. Yes. Five dudes.